Hi everyone, Rob here, Aylesbury Modern Combat Karate. Welcome to the Sunday sessions. These are the informal, unscripted sessions where I just talk about uh, any subject related to either karate specifically or the martial arts world in a more general sense. Um, and I try and look for areas where we're doing well, things we can build on, um, and areas where we're not doing so well, things we might need to improve. So, in today's session... So, in today's session, I'm going to be talking about finding opportunities to teach. Um, and this is not so much in the, the sense of you know, finding uh, a place to set up your own club, you know, run your own dojo, you know, hold your own classes, that kind of thing. Uh, because that takes a, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, um, it's not for everyone. Um, what I'm talking about is the more informal opportunities we have um, to teach people a little, you know, a small bit uh, of what we do, you know, inform people about what it is that we're about, and you know, maybe help people practically with some skills or techniques that they might not know, um, and just generally help people improve. So the example I'm going to use today is from MMA practice on Friday. Um, we'd run through everything that we were doing, so we'd done some stand-up, we'd done some groundwork. Um, one thing that we hadn't covered, and, and it come to the end of the session, um, was some stand-up grappling. And stand-up grappling is you know, a thing that I enjoy doing. Um, I'm much better at it than I am on the ground. And so me and a couple of other guys, we stayed behind to, to kind of throw each other around and body each other a little bit. Um, one of the guys there has done almost nothing before, um, so he has no experience of stand-up grappling. So this was an excellent opportunity for, for me um, to actually help someone and teach someone something. Um, so me and a couple of the more experienced guys, we had a, a, a tussle, we had a throw around. Um, and then I stayed around for about 20 minutes at the end um, and with this guy we went through a, you know, what we call a Koshigaruma in Japanee, so it's a hip throw or a cross buttock throw. Um, we went through a single leg and we went through a double leg. Um, and we just, I just taught him those three techniques and we drilled them and we you know, increased the resistance a little bit. Um, and he got to learn a skill that he had no experience of and he got to, to learn some techniques um, that not only did he not know but that are going to be really useful for him come fight night. Um, and it was, it was a really nice experience for me as well to kind of improve my understanding of those techniques at the same time as, as helping him learn. Um, so I got to teach the techniques, um, look at you know, ways we can adapt them. I'm a much heavier guy than he is, so things that are going to work well for him that don't work well for me, things that aren't going to work for him against someone my size but that he can look at. Um, so the, the common mistake in a double leg of turning it into a lift, the size difference, the guy's never going to lift me. Um, so just making sure we drill that, getting the, the pushing correct. And then things that he has an advantage over me at. He's a much taller guy than I am, much longer legs. Um, so we had a quick look at some kind of leg hooking techniques and some roots that he might, might be able to use. The point of this is that that wasn't a formal lesson uh, that I had arranged. Obviously, I run my own club, we do private lessons, um, we do all that kind of thing. This wasn't a, a lesson that I had arranged, this was a, a spur of the moment opportunity where there was a guy in front of me who said I've never done any of this before, you know, I'd like to learn more, can you show me something? And that was an opportunity for me to help someone and to improve my own instruction. So this is, this is the two reasons I think we should be actively seeking these kind of spontaneous teaching moments. So, the first one, as I said, we can really help people out. You know, if we have someone coming into our club, you know, they've done something before, but perhaps they've never done anything practical. As higher grades, that's an excellent opportunity for you to go, okay, well, you know, Particularly if you've also been in that situation, you can go, okay, well, these are the differences. This is the thing you need to look out for. You know, these are the things that he or she, you know, the head instructor does that you might find a little weird coming from that different background. And these are the kind of 
tacit pieces of information that we understand as members of a club that someone else outside the club might not and that we as instructors might assume everyone knows as well. So for higher grades it's really useful then um, for you guys to go look when we do this he, like, you know, he likes it if we do this or if we you know, get in these positions and he, he really likes to see us working for, for this specific thing when we do this drill and you know don't worry about the bowing and that he's not so hot on that and these, these kinds of things that I as an instructor when you walk into the dojo I might not I might not be a, even be aware that these are things that are the case. So I might not be able to teach you or tell you, but as a higher grade in, in my club or in any other club, someone new walks in, you can teach them those things. Um, and they're not technical things, you know, they're not tactical things. They're, they're more those cultural things within a club um, that it helps people integrate if they understand. Um, but beyond that, we can look for those opportunities to help people technically and tactically. So say for example, you train in two different martial arts. Let's say you do a, an unarmed and a weapon um, style. You know, so you might have some kind of knowledge from your unarmed style, particularly if, if it's one of those that historically is designed to be anti-weapons or, or to have a weapon defense component in it. Say for example, Jiu-Jitsu. If you then go and you train Kenjutsu or Iaido or something like that, you can, perhaps after class or before class or in an informal training session, go, you know, we're training with these swords and we train a lot, you know, swordsmen against swordsmen, but do you guys know as Kenjutsuka what you'd do if you'd lost your sword or, you know, if you dropped your sword, how, or can you, you know, what, what can we use to retain the sword? What unarmed skills that we can learn from, for example, Jiu-Jitsu, can we carry on over into that sport? Or that style or that art? And we can you know, improve the people we train with that way by bringing other elements in. And this isn't, as I say, it's not a formal, oh, I'm going to set up you know, my own Jiu-Jitsu club and I'm going to invite those people around. It could be, you know, we're at the park having a picnic we're talking about martial arts things because that's what we do because we're nerds um, and someone goes oh i really like this technique and you go oh i've got a really good counter for that technique without a sword would you like to see it and then you know you can get up in the park and spend five minutes showing some people this this technique that you like from the other area that that you that you train so the second element as i mentioned is that these spontaneous bits of teaching really help our instruction. Um, as someone who runs a club, I know the people in my club. I know what they respond well to and, and what kind of teaching doesn't help them very much. So I, you know, I have quite set ways I approach things. When I go and I interact with someone from a different area or a different style who I've never worked with before, those set ways of approaching things will not necessarily work with that person so well. So what I need to do is I need to adapt and you know bring my teaching methods around so that they work for that person so I can impart that information to that person as accurately as possible. So for me then I can go back to my club and as new people join and as the group expands and you know the demographic and the makeup changes I have that breadth of you know teaching and experience and instruction experience that those changes in the club dynamic don't affect the quality of the teaching that everyone receives you know i'm not so set in teaching these people in this way that when these new three people come in i don't know how to handle them and it throws the entire dynamic off and these people who have been here longer suffer so the purpose of this little talk today was just you know actively seek out those smaller scale, more spontaneous, um, less formal teaching opportunities. And it doesn't matter what belt you are at all either. You know, if you're, for example, a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I know a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is very skilled, but it's not necessarily a start your own club, 
start training lots and lots of people skilled. Um, but if you're a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you also train, for example, Muay Thai, there's nothing to stop you guys you going, okay, well, you know, from the clinch, this is, you know, I know it's not sport relevant, but it's fun and it's interesting to do. From this clinch position, this is a really nice takedown we can do. Or, you know, if we end up getting knocked down, this is a really good stand up we can do. Um, you know, and you, and you can train that with those people, as I say, after class or before class or just informally together. And while it's not necessarily going to improve their sport performance in Muay Thai, it is going to kind of improve their appreciation and understanding of combat more generally. Um, and it may have applications that, that they did not expect or you know, that they wouldn't understand had you not shown them that thing. And they, you know, it'll broaden then their move set and their ability to, to fight more generally. So seek out, find those informal sessions that you can use to help train people. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter who they are. You know, if someone asks you for help, give it willingly, give it freely. Um, give it to the best of your ability. Um, as we said a couple of videos ago, don't be afraid to say that I don't know and use that as a learning experience for both of you. Go away together, find the thing out. Then you've not gone, don't know, go and sort yourself out. You've both improved your knowledge there and it's good for you to develop that ability to say I don't know. Teaching is one of the best ways to learn something. If you're really passionate about learning what it is you do, whatever martial art it is, or even outside the martial arts this applies, if you're really passionate about learning what it is that you do, go out, find opportunities to teach it, engage in those, do your best at them, and you know, try and take something out of them, learn something for yourself. So that was today's Sunday session, we are just looking at why we should make use of spontaneous and informal training and teaching opportunities where we're teaching someone something else and what we can take away from that. I hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you next week.